pandemic, over time with the introduction of new facts. Old facts just become falsehoods, and new facts evolve. In other words, if it's not this, then what? It's not A, it's now B, okay? And paranormal activity, the belief in paranormal activity, is nothing new. Same, same. But with radio, TV, now the internet and social media, uh, it's perhaps being discussed more often than it used to be. Or is it? Was it always discussed throughout history? But perhaps via newspapers. Uh, Before that, perhaps via around the campfire in a tribal situation. But it's always discussed been discussed. And here's proof. I've got three examples throughout history. None of them any time, I mean, all these stories are over 100 years old, many thousands of years old. But I have three examples of documented paranormal activity that are from three very reliable sources. And again, we have to ask those questions. If not this, then what? The first is a story that I've mentioned on the podcast before because it's just, to me, an incredible story because it's long ago but not so long ago when we had technology but not quite the current technology. And it's a story from the Dallas Morning News, major newspaper in Dallas, Texas back then. Dateline Aurora, Texas. April 17th. About six o'clock in the morning, the early risers of Aurora were astonished at the sudden appearance of an airship that has been sailing through the country. It was traveling due north and much nearer the earth than ever before. Evidently, some of the machinery was out of order, for it was making a speed of only 10 to 12 miles an hour and gradually setting toward, settling towards the earth. It sailed directly over the public square, and when it reached the north part of town, collided with the tower of Judge Proctor's windmill, and went into pieces with a terrible explosion, scattering debris all over several acres of ground, wrecking the windmill and the water tank, and destroying the judge's flower garden. The pilot of the ship is supposed to have been the only one on board, and while his remains are badly disfigured, enough of the original had been picked up to show that he was not an inhabitant of this world. Mr. T.J. Weems, the United States Signal Service officer at this place, and an authority on astronomy, gives it as his opinion that he was a native of the planet Mars. Papers found on his person, evidently the record of his travels, are written in some unknown hieroglyphics and cannot be deciphered. The ship was too badly wrecked to form any conclusion as to its construction or motive power. It was built of an unknown metal, resembling somewhat of a mixture of aluminum and silver, It must have weighed several tons. The town is full of people today who are viewing the wreck and gathering specimens of the strange metal from the debris. The pilot's funeral will take place at noon tomorrow. This article appeared in the Dallas Morning News on April 19th, 1897. There were no spaceships back then. There were no airplanes Back then, flying craft with the the only thing that flew were uh, birds and I guess balloons. This was from 1897, a little over a hundred years ago, from the Dallas Morning News, a legitimate news source. Exhibit number two from Charleston, South Carolina. And this is from the Boston Gazette, actually. 
but the happening is from Charleston, South Carolina, May 17th. A gentleman of the South Fork of the Saluda River, in a letter on the 23rd, sends his correspondence to this city, the following description of the Bald Mountain in the Western Territories. It's an animal. In fact, this animal is 12 to 15 feet high, in shape resembling a human being, except the head, which is in equal proportions to its body and drawn in somewhat like a terrapin. Its feet are like those of a Negro, about two feet long, and hairy, which is a dark, dun color. Its eyes are exceedingly large and open and shut down its face. The hair of its head is about six inches long. Its nose is what's called Roman. These animals are bold and have lately attempted to kill several persons in which attempt some of them have in, in, in which this attempt some of them have been shot. Their principal resort is on Bald Mountain where they lay and wait for travelers, but some have been seen in this part of the country. The inhabitants call it a Yahoo. The Indians, however, give the name of Chickley Cudley. That story from the Boston Gazette, May 17th, 1793. Story number three. We go back a bit further. This is a, an eyewitness account of some type of phenomenon. I will read it, and then I'll give the date and the source. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was human, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet were like those of a calf, and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. Hands. All four of them had faces and wings, and the wings of one touched the wings of the other. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground besides each, beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like topaz, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to have been made like the wheel of an intersecting wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. The wheels' rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. They spread out above the heads of the living creatures in what looked like something of a vault sparkling like crystal, and it was awesome. That was an eyewitness account of the prophet Ezekiel. some 200 or 2,500 years ago. And the source is the Holy Bible. So you see, none of this is new. 120 years ago, 300, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, and 2,500 years ago. These stories are not new. None of these are. No one in Boston doubted the existence of a type of wild animal living in the South Carolina wilderness. This was a news story in the Boston Gazette. People didn't think this was silly. They, they believed it. The Dallas Morning News article, it described a flying object that crashed. And the townspeople buried the inhabitant. They knew he was an intelligent creature. They also knew he wasn't a man. But they still buried the pilot like they would a man after they held a formal 
uh, ceremony for him. And Ezekiel? Ezekiel was an educated and learned man. I mean, he's recognized as a prophet by all three of the great religions. Catholicism, or uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. He did not write his book. In fact, he was actually a prisoner in Babylon much of his life. But but his prophecies, though, were so respected, they were, they were written by what were called the men of the great assembly, some 120 Jewish scribes. They so respected Ezekiel so much that they wrote his prophecies down and they became a book of the, of the Bible. Ezekiel was considered one of the smart people of his time. Now, can paranormal activity be explained? Often, yes. Usually, uh, perhaps all, perhaps always, no. Often, yes. Sometimes, no. Three more recent examples. The Fatima Sundance, a hundred years ago. Thousands of witnesses. Thousands of witnesses saw the, the sun dance after uh, Lucia and her three, two siblings uh, saw the, the uh, uh, apparition of the Virgin Mary and said, on this date, this will happen, and it did. The sun danced, and many, many, many thousands of people saw this. It was documented in newspapers throughout the world. The Phoenix Lights, this was where... Tens of thousands of people witnessed lights above the city of Phoenix. Now, the next day, Governor Fife Symington made a big joke about it. Ha, ha, ha. Well, after Governor Fife Symington was out of office, he came back hat in hand and apologized for that. He said, look, I had to do that because I'm the governor. But it wasn't silly. It was real. A former governor admitted there was something up there. I laughed at it, and I was wrong because it wasn't a laughing matter. And very recently, very, very recently, within the last five years, maybe 10, the Tic Tac UFOs, and I did a podcast on that too. Pilots saw these unidentified flying objects, and the U.S. government has investigated them. And finally, after pressure from the press, the media, and others, they said, you know what? You're right. They're UFOs. We have no idea what these things are. The U.S. government, for the first time ever, has admitted to the existence of UFOs. Now, these three instances, these happenings, these stories, what were they? Was it the Virgin Mary making a, uh, an apparition for the believers? Were the Phoenix Lights extraterrestrial craft? Were the tic-tac-toe UFOs extraterrestrial craft? Or did Ezekiel really see spacemen? Did a UFO really crash in Aurora, Texas? And is there a large, hairy creature living in the woods of South Carolina? It's hard to say. But what you have to ask, if they are not this, then what they what are they, okay? Did a guy from the Boston Gazette just make up a story and the Dallas Morning News? Was Ezekiel just a nut? Did tens of thousands of people in Fatima, Portugal make this up? Did tens of thousands of people and a former sitting governor make this stuff up altogether, by the way? If not this, then what? Now, like today's geniuses who discount God as a fairy table that can't be proven, then try to explain black holes as facts to me. (laughs) Sorry, I'm not buying it. Um, And let's be more specific if we could. Who's arguably one of the smartest guys around? Well, I know he's passed, but Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, no doubt about it, was off the chart smart. Okay? No doubt about that. Nobody denies that. You'd be silly if you did. But I will tell you this. Much of what Stephen...